Hello everybody and welcome back to Research Methods, Section 4, where we're going to talk all about sampling. Now, when we're doing research, especially in the social sciences, we're interested in some target population, right? That population might be um, all people in the United States, it could be all registered voters, in the state of California, it could be all prisoners in federal prisons, but there's some target population we want to know something about. They're the focus of our research. They're the group of, of people or organizations um, that we want to do our research on, right? So the entire group that exists in reality is referred to as our target population. Each individual within that is an element of that target population. Now again, in social science, especially criminal justice, those elements are almost always going to be people, individuals, right? Sometimes it's any person, sometimes it's only adults, sometimes it's only minors, sometimes it's only prisoners, but they're going to be some kind of individual person. Occasionally in criminal justice, you'll do a study where you're sampling, say, prisons, and you want to know, like, what percentage of prisons have this kind of prison policy or something, in which case each element would be uh, a prison or, you know, in that example, uh, and not an individual person, but those are relatively rare. Now, <clears throat> we want to understand something about this target population. And it's usually impossible to do what's called a census, right? The vast majority of the time, people have only really run into that word census uh, in co the context of the United States census. In uh, every 10 years, and years ending with zero, according to the U.S. Constitution, the United States has to do a census of its population. And that means it has to count every single person that is living in the United States. Well, that is what most people think of when they think of census. But in research, you could also theoretically do a census, and that just means attempting to reach every single element in our target population. Problem is, that takes a lot of time and is really expensive. So almost always, what researchers do is they take a sample. They take some much smaller subset of that larger target population, they do their research on that sample, and then they can gauge uh, aspects of the entire target population based on how that sample, uh, inter you know, what, what the research said about that sample, right? That's a heck of a lot easier, a heck of a lot cheaper, takes a lot less time than doing a full census, right? If we can do a census, let's say we're, um, you know, instead of trying to research every person in the state of Kentucky, we only really want to know something about a, a very small group of people. Our target population is only, say, a few hundred or a few thousand um, students at a university or prisoners in, a pri in a, one particular prison or something like that. Then we might be able to actually do a census right? We're going to, we can get really, really good, really complete data if we're allowed to do a census. But the problem is outside of the very rare occurrence where you have a very small target population, a census is just, it costs too much, both in money and time and energy. And it's just impossible. So the vast majority of the time, we're going to be doing some kind of sample, right? So, we've talked about our target population. That's every single element that we want to study, right? Um, so, let's say we're doing political polling and we want to know how people in the state of Georgia are going to vote in the upcoming presidential election. Our target population is every registered voter in the state of Georgia, right? But we're going to draw our sample. We're going to draw a sample of, say, a thousand people. To do that, we need what's called a sampling frame. 
A sampling frame is a list of all the elements in our target population, or at least we want it to be a list of all the elements in our target population. So there might be an existing, a really good sampling frame for all the voters in the state of Georgia. Maybe we can contact the state and get a list of every single registered voter in the state with their phone number and their email address and find some way to sample 1,000 people from that sampling frame, that list of every registered voter in the state. But even that's not going to be perfect. <clears throat> because if we're doing this poll, say, two months before the election, that means there's going to be more registered voters. There's going to be more non-registered voters at the time of the that we get our sampling frame, who, there, those people will then become registered voters after we grab our sampling frame, but before the election, or even before we actually do our poll. So our sampling frame is not going to be perfect as to our target population, right? It's, not, it's never going to be a perfect list of every single element in that target population. As such, that's we're drawing a sample not necessarily from our target population, but from our actual population. And hopefully those are very, very, very close. Hopefully the difference between the population we're actually drawing a sample from and our target population are incredibly small enough so that we can ignore it. The problem comes in when our sampling frame is really not that good and has a very incomplete and inaccurate list of all the elements in our target population and thus our actual population that we're drawing our sample from is distinctly different than our target population. But hopefully we have a very good sampling frame. The difference between the population we're actually drawing our sample from and our target population is minimal and thus ignorable. Um, but that's not always true. Okay, so when we draw our sample, we're going to have, we're going to use our sampling frame, our list of every element in the population, and we're going to draw some fraction of that number out to be added into our survey, our experiment, whatever research we're doing, right? Then we're going to use those people to gather our data. It might be asking them who they're going to vote for. It might be um, asking them if they've been a victim of a crime in the past year. It might be, um, you know, uh, anything that we're trying to gather data from or data about. We're going to pull our sample from our actual population using our sampling frame. And then we're going to grow, we're going to obtain data from those sampling units, right? The elements of our population that are actually drawn into our sample are our sampling units. Okay? <clears throat> now, the problem with a sample when we can't do a census is that our sample is never going to be perfectly representative of our population. There's always going to be some amount of error there's going to be some difference between the group of people we sampled and the group of people we wanted to sample, i.e. our population, right? And there's two kinds of error. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a later, uh, later slide. But if the error is only random error, i.e. due to just random chance, we happen to draw a sample that was slightly different than our population, we, can, we can't necessarily correct for it, but we can have a really good statistical analysis of how much uh, uh, error there probably is, right? Now this error between our sample and our population is expressed probabilistically, right? So there's a 5% chance we're within this much of the truth. There's a 
50% chance we're within this much of the truth, just based on the size of our sample, right? And importantly, this probabilistic sampling error is based only on the size of our sample. It's essentially not dependent at all on the size of our population. So if I wanted to sample uh, all voters in the city of Georgia, and I, or sorry, the city of Atlanta in Georgia, and I pulled out a sample size of a thousand people, I might have a sampling error that is of some value. But if I wanted to do a sample of the entire state of Georgia, and I draw a thousand random people from the state of Georgia, even though we're dealing with a much larger population, my sampling error is going to be exactly the same as it was just for the city of Atlanta. Now, if I wanted to do uh, the exact same thing, but with the population of the entire United States, and I drew a sample of a thousand people from the United States, my sampling error for that much, much, much larger population than the city of Atlanta or the state of Georgia is going to be exactly what it was with the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia. I know this is kind of counterintuitive. I know this is hard for people to wrap their minds around, and I'm not going to go into the mathematics behind this. But as long as your population is above some very small size, your sampling error is dependent essentially only on your sample size. It doesn't depend on the population size really at all, right? So population or a sample of a thousand people, as long as it's done well and as long as we only have to deal with random error, population, a sample of a thousand from a city or a state or the entire country is going to have the same size sampling error, no matter how large the population is. Again, hard to wrap your mind around, but it's true. But there's always going to be some amount of sampling error. Just through sheer random chance, your sample is going to be slightly different than your population. Okay? Now, those elements that we pulled out to do to, to put into our sample, those are often termed units of analysis, right? So again, the vast majority of the time, our units of analysis are going to be people, individual people, right? Whether it's prisoners or citizens or police officers or whatever, it's going to be people. Occasionally, it'll be something like, prisons or schools or counties or something like that. Um, we want to know, you know, we want to do a study of all the counties uh, in these five states and look to see whether they have a, a, I don't know, a law about school district size or something. Um, in that case, our unit of analysis wouldn't be the individual person. It would be the county, right? But the vast majority of the time, our unit of analysis in social science is a person, okay? Now, whenever I teach the research methods class, my most common question I get is how large of a sample do I need, right? That's a really tough question. It really depends on um, what kind of research question you're doing, what your units of analysis are, uh, you know, whether you're doing a survey or intensive interviews or quantitative versus qualitative research and all that kind of stuff, right? I will say this though, there is rarely, almost never a reason to go larger than about a thousand to 1200. So there is definitely an upper limit on your sample size because a, popu a, a sample of a thousand to 1200 people will give you very small uh, margins of that random sampling error uh, enough that, you know, small enough that 
you don't really need to worry about it. All right. Um, but under that size, it really is going to depend on how much money you have, how much time you have, all those things. So the more each unit of your sample, the more time you need to spend with them, the smaller your sample size is going to have to be just because we have finite resources, right? But if you're doing something very um, easy to for the person to do, it doesn't, each individual person or organization being sampled doesn't take up a lot of your time or money. Like if you're mailing out a survey or something, go for a thousand, go for 1200, right? If you're doing really intensive interviews that take a couple of hours each, you're going to have a sample more in the, you know, maybe 50 to a hundred if you're lucky kind of range, right? But it's really going to depend. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Thank you so much for watching.